This video is a request from my friend Arindam Das. Uh, during the course on abstract algebra or group theory, I did not um, give a proof for the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups because it's a, a bit long, this one. But since Arindam Das needs it, so I'm going to provide a proof for this, but I'm going to divide the proof in two or three videos. I'm going to follow the, the structure of the proof that is in the book by Galien, and I'm going to break the proof into three or four lemmas. So we start with lemma number one. Okay, so lemma number one will be let G be a finite abelian group of order m times n. Okay, so G is a finite abelian group and the order is mn, uh, where m and n are relatively prime. Okay, if H x in G such that x to the power of m to the power of this m here equals the identity. So x has order m and k is the set x in G such that x to the power of n, this n here equals e. So x with the operation performed n times you get the identity. Okay, so it does order n, then G, so the, the group, is equal to the product of H times K. Okay, let us provide a proof for this first lemma. So I think it's quite easy to prove that H is a subgroup of G and it's also quite easy to prove that k, so this set under the same operation, is also a subgroup of the group G. Okay, this is really easy. But we are uh, in G, and G is a, an abelian group. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so we need to prove that G equals H times k, and we need to prove that H intersection K equals the identity. We said that if H is this set and K is this set, they are both subgroups of G. Okay, easy to prove, then we prove that these are subgroups. We want to prove that G equals H times K. So, First, you prove that H and K are subgroups, easy, of G, a abelian group, and a abelian group G. So G, if we prove that G equals H, K, and the intersection of H and K is the identity, then this will be proved. Okay? Okay, so what do we know? We know that the greatest common divisor of M and N is 1, right, since they are relatively prime. So we will have integers s and t, I'm going to pick integers s and t, such that 1 will be, so this order is m, m s plus the order here is m and t. I'm getting integers here, okay? Okay. Okay, so we can say that for all G in G, let, let me call it, so I'm going to call it X, okay? So for all X in G, we have X equals X to the power of 1, this one here, that will be equal to X to the power of MS plus NT, right? Okay, and 
this is nothing else but um, uh, x m s times x n t, right? Okay. I hope you remember one of the corollaries of Lagrange theorem. Okay. So, but that's one of the corollaries that says that an element to the power of the order of the group is equal to the identity, where G is the group and A is an element in G. Okay? So this is one of the consequences of Lagrange theorem. So, um, so we got this x to the power of ms times x to the power of uh, nt. And using this, this corollary of Lagrange theorem, we see that x to the power of nt has to be in H. Um, and x to the power of ms has to be in K. Do not forget that the, the intersection will be only the identity. Okay. Um, so since this is true, so G is going to be equal to H times K. Okay, because this, this element will be in H and this element will be in K. Okay, so any element in G will be a product of h times k. Here I pointed to, to, to this uh, fact, but forget this fact here during this proof, okay? I don't exactly recall what I did here, but uh, just remember that m and n are relatively prime, so the greatest common divisor is 1, okay? So due to the corollary, okay, x to the power of nt has to be in a subgroup, and x to the power of ms has to be in a subgroup. It was easy to prove that they were subgroups, so g has to be equal to hk. Okay, now we move to this, okay? So let us say this is proved, and now we move to this one. Okay, let us say we pick an element x, that is here in H intersection K identity. Okay, so X to the power of M is equal to the identity, right? This is by hypothesis, right? And X to the power of N is equal to the identity, too, right? Remember, we come from here H is if h x is in g x to the power of m equals the identity x to the power of n equals the identity okay so we are here x to the power of m has to be equal to e and x to the power of n has to be equal to e uh, you can go back to a lot of previous videos when we spoke about generators of cyclic groups and we said that um, we, we proved two theorems. This one for cyclic groups. Let G be generated by A be a cyclic group of order N, then G, A to the power of K, if and only if the greatest common divisor of K and N is 1. And another theorem was, then we saw this other theorem, the criterion for a to the power of i to be equal to the a of power of j. So let g be a group and let a belong to g. If a has infinite order, then all distinct powers of a are distinct group elements. If a is a finite order, that's our case, say n, then a equals identity a, a to the power of 2 to a to the power of n minus 1. And AI equals AJ if and only if 
n divides i minus j. Okay, so this theorem, if you remember well, there was a corollary for this. And this was the corollary. a to the power of k equals the identity implies that the order of a divides k. Let g be a group and a an element of g of order n. If a to the power of k equals the identity, then n divides k. Okay, so if a a to the power of k equals the identity, right, this implies that the order of this element divides k. So this is important for us now. So we pick x in the intersection of the subgroups h and k. So that implies that x to the power of m equals the identity and x to the power of n is also equal to the identity. And using this corollary, so x to the power of k equals the identity implies that the order of element divides k. So in our case, we can say that the order of x divides m because this is m, right? And the order of x divides n too. Okay? But we have the greatest common divisor of m and n is 1. Okay? So the order of x cannot be anything else but 1. Okay, and since this is tr this is true, x this element that belongs to this set cannot be anything else but the identity. Okay, and this concludes the proof. So we just proved the first lemma, right? Uh, G being a finite abelian group of order m times n. If m and n are relatively prime, so if we have the set H and the set K, right, uh, these two sets, then G, the group, will be the product of H times K, and this first lemma is proved.